awesome ramp. It used to be impossible to get the damn thing off of. <laughs> <laughs> Can you maybe walk us around the lab a little bit? Yeah. Oh wait, and 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 first for the video, can you can you uh, introduce yourself, please? Uh, I'm Jonathan Kaufman. I am a graduate student at University of California, San Diego. Uh, my advisor is Brian Keating. Awesome. This is bicep two. And uh, bicep two. So give us a give us a tour. Yeah. So uh, this is the mount, uh, which you know holds the telescope, moves the telescope around. Yeah. Uh, and points it at things. This was uh, the same mount used for bicep one. Okay. Um, and it is been doing a great job. You did, can see the receiver up there. Did you have to change anything on the mount uh, uh, to get it ready for bicep two? Just the uh, cable wrap on the inside. Oh, so nice. That's easy. Yeah, uh, here in the back, uh, it's nice that the telescope is just rotated for us. <laughs> um, you can see our housekeeping box, which is the okay. electronics readout uh, for all our thermometry, um, temperature controlling. Uh, systems like that. Behind that, that big crate is our uh, MCE, which stands for multi-channel electronics, and that reads out all our detectors. Uh, um, so so each one of the uh, the detectors that we we're talking about is wired up, gets fed into that box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then all that's run through the cable wrap, which goes through, it's quite convoluted. It goes around the telescope and then through actually inside the mount, down mm -hmm. and around. Uh, and right. into our computer systems, which uh -huh. are over here. And what, what about the cooling system um, for the cryostat? So it's a uh, liquid helium cooled system, uh -huh. uh, which we uh, we recharge about every three days. Okay. Um, you can see the fill port in the back there, um, followed by the vent port, and then that long blue wire, uh, the blue and the white are uh, vents uh, that read to our liquid helium readout sensor, so we know the flow rate and uh, mm -hmm. there's a, a level sensor as well to figure out exactly how uh, much we have left. Gotcha. Um, actually, from this angle, if you can see, it might be hard with your camera. Uh, there's our uh, star pointing camera. So it's actually an optical camera that we use. Wait, the, the little one just hanging out yeah. uh, under there? So it's an optical camera. Gotcha. Uh, actually, I think it's optical and might be near infrared as well. Um, that we use to, uh, to actually look at stars, which uh, we point where we think they're supposed to be based on you know where right. we believe our telescope is, uh, and then there's a fun, actually interactive program uh, that we click on and it tells us how far away from those stars are, and we do that for you know a series of stars and that uh, that gives us our, our pointing. Cool, point. interesting. So um, the, uh, the the telescope's been moving as we've been talking. Yeah, right. Why? We're uh, observing the moon. Uh, oh really? We're, we're taking a, a, a map of the moon. Uh, but, for detector beam maps. But, and so but why? That uh, well, for the shape of our uh, uh, our beams. And oh, okay. We can also get a pointing schedule from it uh, based on where we're. Uh, we have a what we call a far field flat on top uh -huh. right uh -huh. now, and it's just a mirror so that we can see things close to the horizon because uh, our telescope can't dip down very much. Right. Uh, and so you know that that, that helps us. Uh, oh, so you're field. like looking through a periscope right now, basically. Sort of, yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll, we can go up top and, and look at that. Cool. Can you show us the uh, the electronics track? Sure. Quickly. This is the uh, brains of the operation. Uh, so we're running a bunch of uh, rack mounted computers. Uh, you know, one will read out the antennas. Mm -hmm. uh, one will will have a control program. Uh, one will just kind of hold the data. There's a firewall so that we can't get hacked because <laughs> this is actually a fairly powerful system. Uh huh. Uh, this. Uh, lumbering beast here with these uh, four uh, uh, power or three power supplies are uh, this actually powers our mount. Okay. Um, and this controls cool. it here the, nice. the whole system. Uh, this is the panic button. Do not oh. push the panic button. <laughs> uh, and then and then what's your display look like? Yeah. So this is our display. This is what's called GCP, uh, which stands for Generic Control Program. Okay. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, most telescopes, uh, at least all the ones in here. What's that? Well, I was going to say, most, most CMP telescopes are on GCP. Um, you know, SBT is using GCP. Uh, you know, the other uh, telescope my advisor huh. works on, Polar Bear, uses GCP. Um, so this is nice just because it, it's got uh, uh, a lot of people working on it. So it's, it's uh, very well documented. And you can do whatever you want to it. Nice. So right here, what, what you're seeing are our thermometers mm -hmm. uh, reading out. Um, everything looks good. Oh, we have cool. our liquid helium level. 
Um, here, what uh, is called the PMAC status, the PMAC being the, the mount control mm -hmm. system. Uh, it's just showing you where it's pointing. Uh, here's our tracker, again, showing you its uh, RA, declination, elevation, azimuth, yep, uh, yep. foresight rotation. Um, what yeah, about this other pointing. screen? So this is our uh, antenna layer. Um, this is uh, this is all the data that's coming in uh, from our telescope. So it goes through this, and then this is, is read out by GCP. Oh. And this is also archived. Thanks. Um, so this is fun to stare at, uh, you know, if you can't sleep awesome. at night or something. Cool. Well, thank you. thanks for the tour. How about we go upstairs? Okay. All right. All right. Let's check out the roof. All right. Head up to the roof of the York Temple Lab. Slice up one and two both peer out of. All right. You can also get a good view of uh, the South Pole Telescope. So this it. this over here to your left or to your right is well, South Pole Telescope. This is the South Pole Telescope. That gotcha. over there is uh, Ice Cube Lab. Ice Cube. You can see the moon right there, which we're currently which, observing. Right. Oh right. And, and, uh, let's yeah, let's check it out. Turn around here. So this is our ground shield. Uh, this prevents any stray radiation from bouncing off the snow and into our telescope. Okay. Uh, you can see there's some more far field flat. Yep. So you can watch it as it, uh, as it moves. So we're mapping back and forth uh, towards the moon right now. Ah. Gotcha. Uh, obviously, this is not up during uh, standard CMB observation. We'll also use it a little bit later to point down into our telescope for some uh, calibration. Oh, to calibrate your own from this mast. Uh, the dust. Uh, that's for right, right, right. And, and what exactly does this big cone do around uh, the telescope? It prevents any, any stray radiation from, from okay. entering our. So, so the radio you wear on your hip or whatever it is. Well, this would be uh, light uh, or a signal you know, bouncing off the okay. snow or picking up some, you know, any sort of spurious uh, polarization signal that we're looking at in our telescope. We're at uh, 150 gigahertz. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty standard for, for CMB. Uh, 150 gigahertz. There's a, a little uh, entrance panel in here. I won't go into it right now because we're running a schedule and I don't want to, uh, you know, it's actually extremely uh, vibrationally sensitive. Um, this thing's a fantastic si uh, seismometer. Uh, seismometer. Um, but yeah, you go in there and shovel out the snow and, you know, yep. how many PhD scientists does it take to shovel the snow? Awesome. Uh, so graduate students are right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then in this box here, we, we have a uh, uh, infrared camera. Uh, just always check it out before you go to make sure there's not, you know, snow piled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, now I am cold. Cool. Thank you for the tour. Let's get inside.